You'd be forgiven if you're experiencing a bit of international whiplash this week. A mere two days after Donald Trump promised to totally destroy North Korea and referred to its leader as Rocket Man before the UN General Assembly, today he announced diplomatic sanctions alongside the leaders of South Korea and Japan. Today I'm announcing a new executive order I just signed that significantly expands our authorities to target individuals, companies, financial institutions that finance and facilitate trade with North Korea. This is a, uh, a complete denuclearization of North Korea that we seek. A big departure from the rhetoric of Tuesday, but while things may be looking a little better on the international stage, life back home in the White House is not looking too good these days for the president and various Trumpians. The steady drip of leaks is turning into a fast-flowing river. And each is more jaw-dropping than the one before. We learned this week that the FBI wiretapped former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort, both before and after the presidential election. And now special counsel Robert Mueller's team is going back more than 11 years into his history. Part of what they found, according to the Washington Post, that Manafort offered private briefings on the 2016 presidential race to a Russian billionaire who was very close to Vladimir Putin. But it's not just Manafort who Mueller is focusing on. The New York Times is reporting he's putting the president President under the microscope, too, seeking documents from 13 different areas on which Trump took action, including the firings of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and former FBI Director James Comey. And somehow, in all Mueller's spare time, he's managing to look into Facebook, too, and whether any Americans may have steered Russian operatives as they bought ad space in an effort to sway the election. So, is there anything here? And how high up is it likely to lead? Joining me are Jennifer Braceres, attorney, conservative commentator, former editor of New Boston Post. Good to see you, Jennifer. Good to see you, Jen. Ben Clements, a former federal prosecutor who served as chief counsel for Governor Deval Patrick, is now leading an effort to have the president impeached. Nice to see you, Ben. Good to see you, Jen. And Lila Alphonse is managing editor at U.S. News and World Report. Good to see you again, too. Nice to be here. You know, let me start with you, Ben. You don't need to be pre Barrara to know that when your lock is picked on your house, as it was with Paul Manafort, and the lead prosecutor Mueller says you're going to be indicted, you're in real trouble. But the conventional wisdom is he is not the target. He's just the bridge to somebody higher up. Do you buy the conventional wisdom? Well, to a degree. I think uh, it certainly looks as though he is a target, uh, but I would tend to agree he's not the only target. And certainly the latest developments suggest that uh, the special counsel is looking very closely at the president and particularly his actions in the White House uh, that I involve potential obstruction of justice. Yeah, is it, uh, f the goal is to have Manafort flip, and I assume the same goal is with General Flynn, is it not? Even if he is the target, as Ben I don't know says. That, I don't know that that's the goal because I don't think there's necessarily anything there for him to reveal. I mean, I think what happens with these special prosecutors is once you're established, in order to prove your worth, you need to bring an indictment. And so somebody's going to be indicted, but that doesn't mean that there's necessarily any there there. There might be with respect to Manafort, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean there's necessarily anything above Manafort. You just want to be able to say, I had these prosecutions and we closed up shop and I was worth what you paid me. Sometimes it's also a way to get at something that isn't happening in the public eye and that like didn't what? happen now. I mean, Bill Clinton wasn't actually indicted for Whitewater. He was indicted for his affair with Monica Lewinsky and trying to cover that up. Well, he was for perjury. For, for right, yeah. exactly. Right. But I mean, it wasn't for an that, affair, let's be clear. My point is that, that the the thing that sparked the investigation isn't what did him in. Right. And so sometimes what they're looking for isn't necessarily what we all think they're looking for. Understood. And by the way, everything except the things like the Manafort, mm -hmm. the things I described the beginning, are speculation. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But that's the game we're in as we wait for Robert Mueller. Let's speculate a little more. Jared Kushner. Uh, many are suggesting, including Vanity Fair this week, that Facebook had to be guided by somebody to decide where to target these ads. Whether the New York Times is reporting earlier this afternoon. Have you replaced a Facebook ad? What? Have you replaced a Facebook ad? No, I have ad? not. Why are you saying that? Because anybody can do it, and it's so easy to do. No, no, no. It the issue is not buying one and play. Right. The goal is having them be effective. And then let me ask you instead. Most uh, 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 analysts are saying if there's somebody in the hierarchy of the Trump uh, effort that is the likely person to be pointing that, it's Jared Kushner. He led the data operations, got rave reviews, I, I hundreds of millions I, okay. of dollars. Why? Well, for, I disagree with the entire premise. I think that any 
person, particularly those under the age of 30, can place an effective Facebook ad these without any These were programmatic ads, so, though. These, excuse me? These were programmatic ads. Meaning what? I understand Meaning that, that you buy a slew of ad time and the ads are served up without going through a Facebook employee for vetting. But they're not necessarily purchased by individuals. But it's not that hard. It's also a ben. question of geographically targeting, demographically targeting, There's and the question well. of whether the Russians are going to be best suited to make those determinations. And there's ample reason to believe they were guided, uh, likely guided by Cambridge Analytics, likely guided, or at least there's reason for the special prosecutor to be investigating to be able whether to figure Jared, out how to buy a Facebook ad. They can certainly figure out how to buy a Facebook ad. The question is, can they figure out the best way to target them? Yes, they or are can. they better off with someone like Jared Kushner guiding them? And there's every They're reason to what believe they do. the latter. They've been silent on us and trying say, to influence our elections me, since 1960. Jennifer, I'm good at watching television. Every right. campaign I've ever run, I hire someone to decide where the ads will be best placed. And the okay. notion is there's not some American, co forget it, well, I don't know if it's Jared Kushner or right. not, but the notion is that the Russians don't need or wouldn't want an intermediary Look, to have the I'm most effective placement. I'm not saying they don't placement. have some specialist, whether it's a Russian person or company or, I, I have no idea. Okay, nobody has any idea. That's the reality. Well, we don't, Bob Mueller may have okay, an idea. Okay, but none of us do. It's yeah. pure speculation. But the notion that this is something so difficult that only someone with inside knowledge like Jared Kushner on the Trump campaign could help them do it is absurd. I don't think the notion is that they would need help because it's difficult. I would think they would need help because it's just a lot easier and you don't have immediate links back to you if there's somebody who's who is already close to the campaign or someone who's within the U.S. or for, Look, for all I know, someone in Facebook if who's Jared the one Kushner handling it. If Jared Kushner was complicit in helping the Russians buy these ads, I will be the first one to come out and condemn him. But the we'll look forward to that. What's yeah, well, but the speculation is, is wild Jim, and based on well, nothing. Let's do something. Jim, well, let's, can we just come back for one second sure. to something that's not wild speculation? I do want to respond to something that Jennifer said, suggesting that there's some sort of pressure on uh, Mueller to bring charges um, even though there's no there there. I think this is actually the opposite situation. He was appointed on the heels of essentially a public act of obstruction of justice. So the compelling the evidence... The firing of James Comey. The firing of James Comey and all of the actions leading up to it, including the loyalty tests, the efforts to drop the Flynn investigation, a whole series of things. And you have this very public piece of evidence of the president admitting on national television that he fired... Comey because of the Russian investigation. That was so the NBC interview. Yeah. It's actually the opposite of the usual situation. The pressure on Mueller is to make even more of a case than is already out there in the public record. The public record case is overwhelming the president obstructed justice. Well, let's, okay. can we can I, I add a fact to this, yeah, if I may, in addition to the request that Mueller has made for information relating to the Comey fire? One other fact, and then we'll engage in conventional wisdom speculation again that you may not like, but uh, we'll see. He's also asking for documents relating to the, uh, the statement uh, constructed on Air Force One by allegedly Donald Trump and his allies about Donald Trump Jr.'s involvement in the infamous meeting with mm -hmm. the Russians. What that suggests to me, I was going to say as a layperson, I'm sort of a lawyer, but I'm not the You're kind of lawyer. lawyer you two are, is that the walls are closing around Donald Trump. Is that an unfair characterization I, based upon those two facts I don't and their facts? I think they are, but I will also say, I want to go back to the obstruction of justice yeah. point, because I want to be clear that the director of the FBI serves at the pre pleasure of the president, and the president is the head of the executive branch and can shut down any investigation anytime Doesn't he wants. Doesn't mean that he can't commit obstruction reason. of justice, even though he has the power to fire it actually, that FBI it, director. It actually does, because obstruction of justice, in order to to obstruct justice, you have to witness tamper or do any number of things that are statutorily prescribed, or like claiming that, that you have tapes when you don't. Excuse me? The tweet about he'd better hope I don't have tapes, is that, would that be considered tampering with a witness or trying to influence a witness? No, I don't think it would necessarily. Can you well, answer my question? I think, most prosecutors, I think most prosecutors would agree that suggesting to a key witness, a person who'd become a key witness, that he had tapes on him, so he better be careful what he says, uh, is a form of so, witness tampering. So what I would and it's argue, not the only one. What, Trump engaged in a whole what series I would argue of conduct besides is that the very, firing. Excuse me, I, that mer very well might be an impeachable offense. It very well may be. Well, anything can be an impeachable offense. As right, we know, there's really, no definition, well, right, but, there's not okay, a statute. Okay, but that may be a very strong, a strong basis for we impeachment. Gotta, However, 
I, I don't I, I don't think you're going to see any criminal charges against this president. I honestly Let, don't. I want to talk about a couple of what ifs uh, for a minute that may not upset all of you, but may. Uh, assuming the president is implicated here. Here is uh, Hillary Clinton on with Terry Gross on NPR the other day. And she has asked the question if she would rule out Hillary Clinton questioning the legitimacy of the election if we learn Russian interference runs deeper than we know to date. Here she is. No, I would not. I, I would say you're not going to rule it out. No, I wouldn't rule it out. But I also so what are the means like this politics. is totally unprecedented it's, in every way. It is. What would be the means to challenge it if you thought it should be there, challenged? It, basically, I don't believe there are. There are scholars, academics who have arguments that it would be. But I don't I, I don't think they're on strong ground. But people That's are what, making those arguments. My apology. She goes on to quote a Kenyan Supreme Court ruling overturning a presidential election, but says it's probably not appropriate for this thing. I assume no. we all agree, no matter how grotesque uh, uh, theoretically the bill of particulars to come out of Mueller at the end of the day is, there's no vehicle for overturning this election. Is that? I would you, agree well, with you. You don't well, agree? I, I'm not necessarily going to agree with it. I certainly say it would be unprecedented. How I'd would certainly agree that? it would be unlikely. And what would the basis be? Uh, the basis would be tampering with the election. And, uh, and we, we've never with? had in our history the kind of tampering that it appears we may have Let's had in this really? particular Tell election. Tell me what the and, vehicle and what, is. Uh, show me one vote that was changed on the basis well, of anything. Well, I'm saying if Mueller... There's a whole presidential committee but, but more importantly, that, right? look, it's we do, we do proof. have means for getting at this, uh, and it's impeaching the president, it's impeaching the vice president if he was also involved. You think he should be impeached and now pre Mueller? You think I, what, because I, of the emoluments? I believe clause Donald alleged Trump by? should be subject to an like impeachment him. investigation right. right now for a whole variety of Give reasons. Give me the top what, two. Top two are the emoluments violations, blatantly violating the anti-corruption clauses of the Constitution since he took office, obstruction of justice. I believe there's a whole slew since then, undermining equal protection on a daily basis, inciting violence against political enemies, against minorities, and abusing the pardon power. Can I, you, I assume you would agree that, uh, at least technically, there are endless violations of the emoluments clause. I'm not uh, agreeing that he should be impeached for them. But there's no question that he is violating that part of the Constitution. Is there at all? I don't know. But here's what I want to say. Yes, you do know, Jennifer. Uh, well, You're a pretty good lawyer. I mean, based upon what you know. Here, here's what I want to say about impeachment. Yeah. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Whether you want it to happen or think it's appropriate to happen, it is never Why going to happen. Why do you say that? Because he and everybody else do not want Mike Pence to be president. Well, that's, the the, that's what's so fascinating to me. If progressives and and even people who are somewhere in the middle are willing to accept Mike Pence as president and still want to impeach Donald Trump, what does that say? It says it's not really a personal vendetta. It says it's not people being partisan. It says that there's possibly a problem. And also, you don't no, think Republican I, leaders in Congress would far prefer Pence at the end of the day than Donald Trump? They absolutely would. Mm -hmm. well, and but the Democrats who leads, wouldn't. And who controls Congress? Well, you got to make the argument to them. Nobody's making the argument to them. Well, Bob Mueller hasn't come out yet, but we have. It's gonna, we got to go quickly. Very quickly, I just want to respond to the idea it's never going to happen. Same was said about Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon won the popular vote by almost 25 percent. Uh, he had over 60 percent of the vote. Uh, nobody thought Richard, Richard Nixon, Nixon could be impeached. Richard Nixon covered up crime. But he also uh, wasn't so did Donald Trump. Uh, Donald that Trump has done to be far seen. more on than Richard Nixon. You have zero proof of that. we got to go. Jennifer, it's good to see you. I'm glad we agreed on all these things. Ben, it's great to see you. <laughs> nice Lila, to see you. as always, thank you so much.